Welcome to the district. I'm your Fulton County Commissioner of District 4, Vice Chair Natalie Hall. The upcoming show will showcase many reasons why Fulton County is a big deal. Fulton County government thrives on delivering efficient, high impactful services to every resident and visitor. Fulton County's vision is to stimulate a positive, diverse community with a thriving economy, safe neighborhoods, healthy residents, and a rich quality of life that all people can enjoy. As a county government, we're mandated to provide health and human services that are innovative, effective, efficient, and trustworthy. We have a great show with two of Fulton County's newest directors here to talk in depth about our amazing programs and services and grant opportunities. I have the Director of Arts and Culture, David Manuel, and the Director of Community Development, Stanley Wilson, with me on this show. Stay tuned for a great show filled with information you will need, and we will be right back. back to the district. We have a great show planned for you. I'm your Fulton County Commissioner of District 4, Vice Chair Natalie Hall, and joining us is the Fulton County Director of Arts and Culture, David Manuel. David Manuel joined Fulton County from neighboring DeKalb County. David is a graduate of the Atlanta College of Arts. He previously spent more than 20 years with the Woodruff Arts Center, where he was responsible for strategic development and operations for the Alliance Theater, the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, the High Museum, and the 14th Street Playhouse. In that work, he led numerous community partnerships and collaborative campaigns with public and private partners. At Fulton County, he's responsible for leading operation of art centers, oversight of the annual contract for services program with arts nonprofits and the public art program. David believes arts and culture bridges gaps in our community. It lifts our spirits and brings us together. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Commissioner Vice Chair. So tell us about yourself and your journey as an arts administrator. Well, it all started in Birmingham, where, I'm a, where I was born and raised, and I attended the Alabama School of Fine Arts, which was a school very similar to the movie Fame, where you saw the performers. Got a scholarship to come to Atlanta College of Art, and I got my first taste of Atlanta. I graduated from Atlanta College of Art, started working at the Woodruff Arts Center, and really being a part of the different divisions of the Woodruff, the High Museum, Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, Young Audience, um, and uh, the Alliance Theater and spent 20 plus years there and left there for a small spell, went to Verizon Wireless as uh, assistant manager. And then later I got a call saying there's an art center in DeKalb County that needs programming. And I joined DeKalb County and spent 10 years running the Porter Sanford Performing Arts Center, as well as some events and cultural events uh, in the county of DeKalb. And then I got the opportunity to come to the great county of Fulton County. And I've been here now for a little bit over 90 days. And I'm excited about everything that we're doing in DeKalb County and working with the community and bringing arts to the residents. Well, that is outstanding, David. And I understand you have a wealth of experience with community partnerships and diversity. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the community partnerships and diversity really started during my stint at the Woodruff Arts Center. Being around the Lions Theater, the Symphony and the High Museum back in the 80s, I noticed there weren't a lot of people coming to these events that looked like me and looked like what the city and the county of uh, Fulton represent. And so I wanted to put together some programs that really welcome cultural offerings to the campus of the Woodruff Arts Center. And I started working closely with the Latin American Association, the Mexican Center of Atlanta, the National Black Arts Festival, the Asian uh, community, as well as the Chinese Business Association to see what they wanted to see on Peachtree Street. 
and I got a chance to put together a program titled Celebrate Diversity Through the Arts, which I received a grant from American Express and uh, the Turner Foundation to really engage and have that conversation about how do we bring more diverse programming. And the program was supposed to last two years, it ended up lasting eight years, but it gave me an opportunity to really engage and understand uh, our cultural differences as well as embrace the offerings. I love that you are creating a multicultural aspect to arts and culture for Fulton County. We need that. And tell us about your vision though and how you plan to expand your department. Well, we wanna increase our reach. And when we say increase our reach, we want to increase our reach in the entire county. We want to make sure that we make these communities a vibrant community when it comes to arts and culture. We want to meet people where they are. And so I always use this quote to my staff that we're going to take art to the street. And we had a great opportunity to do that at the Rotten Garn, uh, at the uh, Garner event that you hosted the other day, where you got a chance to see just a small snippet of what my department will be providing to the citizen. And so we're excited about uh, intermingling the virtual aspect because of COVID, as well as getting back to in-person performances. So we're just excited to really partner and collaborate with so many of the organizations that we support and fund. I love that um, you're, you're saying that you're gonna take it to the streets because as a commissioner, that was one of the things I pushed coming in in 2018 that we cannot sit in our cushy offices with our air conditioning in the summer and our heat in the winter and expect for the residents to come to us. We need to take it to the streets. And so you are right on board with that. And so communicating and reaching out to the, to the community, getting out there, what does that look like post pandemic? Cause you know, we're just coming out of the other side of, of COVID things are, uh, kind of going more smoothly with outdoor events and even indoor events. What does that look like for arts and culture? Well, we got a chance to really explore during COVID how we put together our virtual program. So you can go to our website and click on our on-demand videos and you'll see a wealth mm -hmm. of entertainment in terms of pottery making, in terms of painting, in terms of all types of instructions that you can learn in the comfort of your home. Now, when we move away from the home and we get back to the quote unquote, what we consider the norm, we want to do more outdoor events. We have a public art uh, department within our department that is providing a lot of the artwork in our Fulton County building, as well as when you travel around Fulton County, you will see them in parks, you'll see them in libraries. And so we're excited about that. And we're looking forward to stepping into technology. You've seen the Van Gogh experience, you've seen the Illumination experience. Well, we're doing those same things with programs like Art Meso that you recently visited in the shops of Buckhead. And now we wanna just take that to the buildings and the street surfaces of Fulton County as we show people what art is truly about. Well, David, you know, I had a great time at Art Meso with you. It was an experience beyond anything I have seen in Atlanta. Um, you made me feel like I was back home in Chicago where arts and culture is just really rich in, in Chicago. And I love what you're doing. So please continue that and, and tell us a little bit about the visual arts programming. Because I saw some of that. Didn't I see some, some of that Art Mesa with the wall? Right. So you got a taste of what we're doing in terms of digital art that's the way the world is heading. And so we have to be very creative, you know, in terms of our murals. People are used to seeing murals and artists painting on walls and we're still doing that, but also we can project on walls. That way we don't paint and mess up anything, but we can put images on walls that really engage the community. So imagine seeing an image, a video image of let's say uh, the March on Washington but also when you pass by, you become part of the artwork, you become part of the march. That's an experience that every resident should experience and really enjoy. And that's what art can create. And so we're really excited about taking art to the next level in terms of technology, as, as well as still putting the foundation for the old school art for the painting, the drawing, the pottery. We have something to offer for everyone. Well, speaking of offering something for everyone, 
Um, you know, you have a program called Contracts for Services, right. and it is an awesome program for our nonprofit organizations to be able to apply for grant funding. Tell us a little more about that. Well, the Contract for Service program, which we call C CFS, uh, it provides unrestricted general operating and project uh, support funds to eligible Fulton County-based nonprofit uh, tax-exempt organizations that produce mm -hmm. ongoing programming to the public. We're really excited mm -hmm. about that because we support, thanks to the strong support of our mm -hmm. commissioners and our leadership, we support about mm -hmm. 160 arts organizations and artists with funding. We're the largest arts uh, funding organization in Fulton County, and we don't take that lightly. And so what we're gonna be doing starting in 2022, you're gonna see a lot more of us, not just the funding part, but you're also gonna see us come alongside these organizations to collaborate and partner and really build a true connection with all the programs that's going on in Fulton County and the state of Georgia. Awesome. And, you know, I always tell the arts organizations and the artists that uh, we have one of the best contract for services grant programs um, awarding up to $50,000. Uh, when I say that, they're, they're amazed at the amount of money that Fulton County is trying to provide to assist with arts and culture, but we must do it in to really enhance what's offered out here. Um, and also, what types of organizations uh, are funded? I know we do have uh, the artists that are funded right. and this arts and culture nonprofits, but what does this funding mean for arts organizations during COVID-19 and the pandemic? Well, along those organizations that you missed, we also fund cultural institutions, colleges, university, schools, and also units of government. And I'll tell you this, uh, uh, Commissioner Hall, it's a pleasure to go around to all the offerings that are happening in our county. And when you look at the brochure book, you see the logo on the back, the Fulton County Arts logo. Uh, we're not just one that funds, like I said earlier, we are part of the program and we're trying to create an atmosphere that is welcoming to all communities. And so when you start looking at how we fund and these artists need support because COVID uh, has put a strain on everyone, the economy, individuals, and you've heard the phrase of starving artists. Well, it's true. And so what we're doing as a county, uh, we are assisting artists to get back on their feet, to do the things that are really making our community enriched, more powerful and, and promoting the arts. So we are a leader with that. And we're excited to just expand our reach in 2022 in terms of who we target and who we invite in to be a part of this whole cultural dynamic. Well, speaking of 2022, what new programs do you have on the horizon for 2022? So we're working on so many programs. One program that we're working on is called the Future Lab Program. And the Future Lab is where public art and technology intersect. And so we're excited about what that offers, as well as we're doing a disability study with arts organization in terms of how uh, people with disabilities are able to participate, not just in the audience, but also as a worker and also as a performer. We wanna make mm -hmm. sure that Fulton County leads this charge in terms of making it accessible to, in every aspect for people with disabilities. So we got the art on one side, we do the funding on the other side, we got the public art that you see every time you drive through the county, but we're also very sensitive about the needs of all our residents to make sure that we can accommodate them, as well as our seniors in terms of putting pottery making programs uh, at senior centers and going and doing more outreach. So we're really looking forward to 2022 and, and, and hoping that the numbers still go down with COVID so we can really get out there and be face-to-face -face with our community. Yes, so speaking of um, COVID and getting out there, what new and innovative programming does public art have planned? You know, being that it's public and we have COVID, we don't know what's gonna happen with that. Right, so, you know, just like I mentioned, uh, the, the future, the Future Art Lab is really exciting because it's technology. And so we're really uh, looking forward to uh, launching that. 
but also we're going to be looking at how we do outdoor events, how we open up in March and April in terms of festival. The John P. Garner Walk was a good example of what we can do in an outdoor space. And so we're really looking forward to being as creative as possible and also partnering with organizations uh, that have outdoor amphitheaters. So we want to bring the arts inside and out and we want to meet people where they're comfortable with. Everyone is not comfortable gathering uh, in large gatherings. And so we have to make sure that our virtual program are at the top of our list as well, because we don't want people to miss out on the many offerings that we have through this county. Well, David, it has been an honor having you on the show. And I'm so happy to have you join the Fulton County team. It's long overdue that arts and culture becomes one of those number one offerings of the county. Um, as you know, when we first met, I said, let's make sure we add film and music and entertainment to that. Um, there's and so fashion. much more. Yes, and fashion. And you are doing all of that. So I'm looking forward to what the future holds and looking forward to what the next show will be about when, you, when we circle back around to you again. Well, thank you for having me. And we have such a dynamic staff. We have a dynamic staff, uh, Arts Council. But again, at the end of the day, it starts with our leaders, our commissioners who get the vision and you guys get it. And because you get it, you allow us to have the freedom to keep creating. And we're very thankful for that. Thank you. And when we return, we will have Fulton County Director of Community Development, Stanley Wilson, join us. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the district. I'm your Fulton County Commissioner of District 4, Vice Chair Natalie Hall. If you're joining us, we are introducing two of Fulton County's newest department heads and discussing what programs and services and grant opportunities are available through Fulton County government. Earlier on the show, we had Arts and Culture Director David Manuel. Now joining us is our new Community Development Director, Stanley Wilson. Stanley Wilson's achievements have been centered on driving economic growth in our communities and creating strong affordable housing programs to benefit underserved families. Stan serves as the Community Development Director for Fulton County in Atlanta, Georgia. His leadership history echoes his belief in the opportunity community development presents for people to come together to build a better community. Stan's experience includes serving as the Neighborhood Development Director for the City of Greensboro, North Carolina, and the Executive Director of the Greenville County Redevelopment Authority. He has also served as the executive director of the Salisbury Rowan Community Action Agency, a regional nonprofit dedicated to helping families living in poverty achieve their personal goals. As the housing director for the city of Charlotte, Stan was instrumental in the development and launch of the city's first housing trust fund. Originally from Springfield, Massachusetts, Stan earned a Bachelor's of Science degree in Business Administration and Management from Western New England University. Stanley, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vashti. I appreciate the invite. You're welcome. Can you talk about your background and experience in community development a little more? Oh, certainly. Uh, you know, when I started out, my, I, I actually ran a small business. And after running that small business, I realized I needed to do more, I could contribute more. And, you know, I found myself uh, with a passion for serving low-income families. And uh, so from there, uh, I worked at the city of Charlotte. I was the housing director there. I had an opportunity to implement some of the programs that we have here in Fulton County. 
also uh, was the executive director of a nonprofit agency, an agency in six counties that really focused on helping families move out of poverty. And also too, uh, I served as the director for the Greenville County Redevelopment Authority. And we really focused on neighborhoods, changing neighborhoods and really uh, helping families thrive within those neighborhoods. And then before coming here to Fulton County, I was in Greensboro, North Carolina. And there uh, I had the opportunity to be the neighborhood development director of managing HUD programs and actually revitalizing neighborhoods in the community. Dan, can you talk about um, the programs and services offered by community development and some of the things that you're going to do to enhance those programs and services? Oh, absolutely. Uh, one of the exciting things about coming to Fulton County are the wide range of programs. We assist youth. Uh, we have My Brother's Keeper. We actually just launched a leadership program that's really virtual. And so dealing with the time that we're in with this pandemic, but it's really an opportunity to help uh, youth become leaders. Also, too, uh, we provide programs for homeless assistance, working with numerous nonprofit groups. We also uh, rehab homes as well, minor repair program, primarily helping our seniors, and also to providing down payment assistance to um, really help people become homeowners as well. And one of the programs I'm really excited about is our community services program, because one of the great things about Fulton County is the number of nonprofits we engage and we support uh, you know, to help our constituents. And CSP, Community Services Program, is a great opportunity to do just that. You know, Community Service Programs is one of the many grant programs that's near and dear to my heart because it's important to me to ensure that the residents of Fulton County, especially those in my district in District 4, know all the wonderful offerings that we have. But Fulton County cannot do it by itself. So we have our nonprofit partners. And this is where grant funding comes in to help our nonprofit organizations do the work that we need them to do. So can you expand on explaining the community service program grant to those who are not familiar with it? Absolutely. And actually, the program, we fund over 146 nonprofits. And these nonprofits provide, provide children and youth services, disability, help with economic stability as well, poverty, working with agencies that provide services for homelessness as well, also senior services. And a new category, which Vice Chair, you're very familiar with, and that's our health and wellness category, which really came about as an outgrowth of some of the things we're dealing with today. But we appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. That was something that I wanted to make sure was added because I remember when the grant programs used to be called fresh grants. And that's when we did have a health and wellness component to it. And I wanted to make sure that we didn't miss out on that, especially with COVID-19 um, and the things that we've seen happen in the health industry. We need that category to help those nonprofit organizations. So I'm, I'm excited about that new category. I'm so We are as well. <laughs> it was embraced by my colleagues and the county manager took my idea and he, he incorporated with his execs and they put it in there. So it's going to be nice to see how what comes of it in, for 2022. We're excited so, about it as well. <laughs> thank you. So speaking of COVID-19, how has COVID-19 impacted the community development department? Well, for us, and like other departments, it really shifted our focus. Uh, you know, we, see, we received quite a bit of dollars from HUD, and these dollars are to really help in rental assistance, also helping homeless agencies to, to really provide better services. Uh, we received dollars that were Treasury dollars, CARES Act funds as well, and also American Rescue Plan dollars. So our real focus has been really trying to help create the programs and help get the dollars out to the community as fast as we can, because we know a lot of people need help. So that's really been our biggest focus. Our other programs have not stopped, but uh, a primary focus has been around these dollars and, and really helping the community as quickly as we can. So tell us, um, what are some of the opportunities that you see within Fulton, the Fulton County organization and how do you believe uh, community development can better impact the neighborhoods? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, we just just had David on, and we, you know, we're talking about connections, connecting youth 
to art and culture as well. So that's one area that we're looking at. Also too, we've seen a lot of uh, challenges around homelessness in our libraries. So we wanna work with libraries and see how we can create programs and resources uh, you know, to help in that area. Also too, senior services, many seniors uh, need their homes rehab. So we're connecting with senior services and see how our, our, connect, our connections can help more people. And, and to do a little bit more work to improve their houses uh, than probably in the past. And also to behavioral health, uh, they do a lot around permanent supportive housing and providing the services. So we wanna try to connect with them, see if we can create more permanent supportive housing and work with them as well so they can uh, provide the services and the connection that need to help people live uh, and create sustainable environments. So those are just some of the things that we're looking at uh, moving forward. Well, that's a lot, Stan. So <laughs> <laughs> it seems had, like a lot. <laughs> but if you had to choose just one area that needs a greater focus, what would that area be? If I'm going to pick one area, it happens to be homelessness. Uh, one of the things that, you know, mm -hmm. homelessness has always been there, but the pandemic has really, um, really shown that to be a challenge. And now it's not just homelessness, it's homeless prevention as well. So we're, you know, we're actually talking with uh, folks over at the city of Atlanta, seeing how we can streamline some of our processes and work together there. We're looking at ways that we can provide more housing uh, as well. And as I mentioned, supportive housing uh, with help of uh, behavioral uh, health as well, so we can provide services. And that's a key area, I think, where a lot of emphasis is going to be needed and a lot of focus. Well, Stanley, um, when you said homeless prevention, it just really made me think about the evictions. And uh, that's one of the areas that I'm focused on uh, with our state legislators to uh, address evictions, because as we know, a lot of people were harmed um, financially due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to working more with you in that area, homeless prevention, because most people just generally are paycheck away from being homeless. Absolutely. Um, and so we need to focus on that more. And I'm going to push for the state to pass some legislation to help people who may be in that situation of being evicted. Um, and David Dreyer and Chief Judge Cassandra Kirk and others are really working with me on that. So I'm looking forward to pulling you into that too. So Stop using those key <laughs> phrases. Well, I'm giving well, you more we, work. We will be right there. <laughs> we will be right there. Uh, we appreciate the support uh, that you provide, as well as the other commissioners as well, because it, it's but, been tremendous. Yeah. And I appreciate you too, Stanley. And thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Can't wait to come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much and have an awesome evening. Thank you. And when we return, I will share my closing thoughts. Welcome back to the district. I'm your Fulton County Commissioner of District 4, Vice Chair Natalie Hall. It was a pleasure to have the Director of Arts and Culture, David Manuel, and the Director of Community Development, Stanley Wilson, on the show. Fulton County truly has the best for programs and services in the state of Georgia. Fulton County offers services and programs for more than a million Fulton County residents. Thanks to your taxpayers dollars, these services and programs are readily available and free to all Fulton County residents. Please take advantage of what Fulton County government has to offer. We are here to provide the best health and human services to you and your families. For a list of upcoming events and shows hosted by Fulton County Arts and Culture, please visit fultonarts.org. And remember, an application for the CFS grant typically opens in March. The small arts project category has rolling deadlines, which are subject to funds availability. And to learn more about community development, which houses Fulton County's homeless department and youth department, please visit FultonCountyGA.gov. Although the application deadline for the CSP grant has passed, the application will become available again in early fall. Please stay updated on the county's response to COVID-19 via the county's website at FultonCountyGA.gov 
You can also follow me at Fulco D4. That's F-U-L-C-O-D and the number four on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Although we're seeing a decline in the number of COVID cases and deaths, we still need to remember to follow the most updated CDC recommendations. That's our show. I'm your Fulton County Commissioner of District 4, Vice Chair Natalie Hall, and thank you for watching the district.